What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Martha Messenger, we're back in another video. This one's going to be about the spiritual attacks and the spiritual war you'd be going through uh, as believers in Christ, especially in the beginning of your walk. You see, because the Bible says there's a time for war and there's a time for peace. And I feel like not many people talk about the war side of it. And, you know, when you're in a spiritual war, a lot of people are going to look at you weird and crazy because you're experiencing things that people haven't experienced yet. You know, now some people never experience it because some people serve the devil side. Some people are on the other side of history, the wrong side of history, I should say. And, you know, when you're under a spiritual warfare and you're getting spiritually attacked because you departed from your sins, um, you're pretty much being obedient more to God. Uh, you're keeping God's commandments. And excuse the background noise, too, by the way. It might be kind of loud. I might have to edit that out. But anyways, uh, you gave up your sins. You, you live your life of repentance. Uh, you're pretty much, you know, walking in the spirit. You could expect 100% uh, for you to get attacked. Okay. Uh, and this is a good thing, too, as well, because you got to understand that even Christ was under attack heavily. You know, even his own people. His own people went against them. So you should rejoice when these things are happening, when you're being persecuted for righteousness sake. Okay, this is actually a good thing. You actually should embrace this. Okay, just like I tell you guys, embrace being, you know, uncomfortable. Okay, when you're uncomfortable, that's usually, you know, for the right things, obviously. But, you know, you're uncomfortable because, you know, following Christ in this world, following God and, you know, his law, statutes, and commandments in this world we're living in is so bizarre to many people. It's so crazy and it's just, you know, you don't want to, you know, they look at you weird and crazy. Even so-called Christians, when you say that you don't want to partake in Christmas and Easter and Halloween, you know, you're pretty much really following God wholeheartedly and you no longer want to deal with the paganism. You don't want to, no longer want to do with what the world is following because that's what the world is following. So you're pretty much going your own way, which is, you know, being set apart. When I say your own way, I'm talking about, you know, following what God wants in your life. God, that the narrow path. Okay, so... Um, and you're, you know, you're pretty much the black sheep of your family, uh, of the world, okay? You know, because many people in this world, guys, are sheep and goats. And there's nothing wrong with being a sheep. But when you're a sheeple, when you just, you know, you're following what everybody else is doing just because everybody else is doing, you're going to find yourself, you know, on the path of destruction, uh, the blind leading the blind, okay? If the blind lead the blind, all fall into a ditch. So one of the most important things to understand and to realize that you're in the spiritual warfare, you got to be conscious of knowing that, okay, I have gave up my sins. Now let me pay attention. Let's pay attention to wisdom. <clears throat> Let's pay attention to knowledge. Let's pay attention to understanding because it will teach you or show you. Let's pay attention to the Holy Spirit that, wow, you know, I'm on the right side. I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm doing the right thing. So embrace when you get attacked for the right things. Now, of course, you could also get attacked for the wrong things, okay? There's many wrong things you could do on your walk, you know, reaping what, you're, what you sow. If you do wrong to somebody, expect for you to get wronged, okay? If you're, if you're causing hell in someone's life, expect for hell to visit your life. Okay? Now, this might not happen instantly. This could happen five days, five weeks, five months, five years from now. But best believe, whatever you, you reap in this lifetime will come back to you. Okay, So this is why you should always choose to do good. Okay, And don't do good for reward from people. Okay, You do good because you know that this is what God has called you to do. Okay, You're the light of the world. You know Israel is the salt of the earth. Okay, So that's what we're called to be. And it's not easy. Like I said, guys, it's not easy when we live in a, such a defiled, corrupt uh, Babylonian society here in America is really hard uh, they, they, and Satan it's all Satan's system because this is Satan's kingdom the world is Satan's kingdom so he has designed it where pretty much everything you do you're you're either spirits not, I'm not I'm not gonna say everything you're doing but majority of things that get promoted in Babylon uh, is death you know not even just spiritual death physical death the food that we're eating if we're not you know we're not growing our own food if we're not growing our own food uh, and we're relying on the grocery store to get our processed foods, you know, and things are unnatural and, and GMO and all that type of stuff. Like literally, and that's why, you know, in the, in the Bible days, uh, when Noah, Noah, Adam and Eve, they all lived up to 700, 500 years. I think Noah was 900 years old, something like that. You know, and in today's society, we're not living that, that older. You know, now one of the main reasons because of that too is also sin. You know, sin wasn't heavenly push when Adam and Eve was, you know, it was, when it was just Adam and Eve and a few other people after that too as well. But now we're living in Satan has made it where literally it's just sin. Like literally you go outside, even in the movie The Matrix where, uh, where Mor Morpheus tells Neo that the Matrix is all around us. Even when you look out your window, okay, when you leave your house and that is true. And what you're seeing is all around us is sin, it's corruption. 
you know um people don't understand that the world we're living in not everybody you see is human even the bible tells you that in hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 that don't be forgetful to entertain strangers for some have entertained strangers unaware okay so if the bible's letting us know that we are entertaining angels which also one thing about my journey i can't speak for everybody else but when i was going through a heavy spiritual warfare god has always said angels in human form okay i didn't know this at the time but looking back you know, and, and he sent the angels in human form to come my way to comfort me, to let me know, like, you know, to give me hope, you know? Uh, but yeah, so the Bible's letting us know that there's angels in human form that disguise themselves as strangers or, you know, things of that nature. That lets us know that there's also demons in human form too. And the demons, they literally feed, they're like energy vampires. That's one sign of a demon, someone who's an energy vampire, someone who's just harvesting and feeding off your energy. Uh, when, uh, the video that I made about seven signs, someone is a demon. One of the first signs I broke down is that when someone is causing you to rage, to rage, to be angry, to be wrathful, you know, they're provoking you towards that, that is a demon in someone, okay? And this is, just, you know, that video, is, I'm so glad that video has a lot of views because a lot of people need to see that because we're not battling against flesh and blood, okay? Uh, going back and forth with certain people, once you see the spirit that's behind them, there's really no, or even if you see the spirit behind them even before you all saw arguing, there's literally no point of going back and forth, okay? It even says that you're not supposed to cast your pearls in the swine. But if you look at, you know, um, the, commu the religious community or the Christian community, the spiritual community, whatever you want to call it, right? All you see is just people arguing and going back and forth. Like everyone wants to be right and no one wants to be wrong. No one wants to humble himself to learn. And you don't want to be like that, okay? Uh, it's, it's the most important thing you could do on your walk. One thing that I noticed, right? The first thing you want to do, the first thing you want to do, guys, is to humble yourself, okay? Um, even if you're not arrogant, even if you're not a prideful person, even if you're not, you know, selfish, but you just want to humble yourself. And when you humble yourself and, you know, you humble yourself for God, of course, that leads to repentance. You know, you, you now, now you can see the error of your ways and you don't look at the outside. You don't look out the attacks that's coming. You look at your own faults. You look at your own sins, your own burdens. Uh, the, your own strongholds. You're not looking at what the outside is is critiquing you or, or like you know attacking you with. So I feel like that's the most important thing, guys. When you are in a spiritual war, yes, you want to be conscious of it, be aware of it, okay. But also understand that things are happening behind closed doors. When you're doing the right thing, things are happening for the greater good in your life. And everything that people meant for evil for you, to people, because there's gonna be a lot of people on this on this path who are gonna try to take you out, literally take you out the game, man. Okay, um, and best believe what the evil they do in your life is, is always 100% going to be rewarded for good. Okay, it even says this, what happened with Joseph, okay? You meant evil for him, but God meant it for good. Okay, to bring to the past today to save many people alive, okay? So always understand that when you're walking with God, literally nobody could be against you, nobody. If you have a clean heart, doing the right thing, um, now, just because no one could be against you doesn't mean that, you know, devils and demons, evil spirits won't form up a pack because the Bible does say that, um, you know, in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, that weapons will form against you. Okay. Like I said, guys, they're going to try to take you out the game, man. People don't want you to follow God. People don't want you to follow Christ. Okay. But if you're following de the devil, they don't mind that. They have no problem with you doing that. This is how you know that this is a satanic society we're living in. This is how you could tell. Okay. Where evil is good and good is evil. That's the times we're living in. So, yes, be uncomfortable that people are looking at you weird and crazy because you decided to be, literally the best best thing you could do in this life, guys, is to walk the narrow path. That is the best thing you could do in this life. It's not make a million dollars. It's not this and that, acquire this and that. That's literally the best thing you could do in your life because we know that this world is temporary, okay, and our salvation lies above through Christ. And, you know, so if Christ is saying to do this and that, we got we ought to do it. Okay, but the world is telling you, no, you don't gotta do that, you don't gotta do that. But the Bible, the scriptures, you know, the word of God is saying to do the opposite. Who are you gonna listen to? Okay, a lot of people are so deceived and see like what well, people don't realize, right? A lot of people don't know this, okay? The reason why people are given over to false teachers, false prophets, um, you know, agents, whatever you wanna call it, right? The reason why people are given over to those people is because they receive not to love the truth. Okay, so God sends them over to the deceivers so they could get deceived and lied to. Okay, because if you reject the truth, then it means 
The only thing you're gonna gravitate towards to is lies, feel good messages, tickling ears. That's the only thing you're gonna gravitate towards to because you've rejected the harsh truth. But see, the truth, it heals. The truth, it changes, okay? A lot of people say, come as you are, which I don't really agree with that because God requires change in your life. He requires repentance, which I told you, you gotta humble yourself and then repent. Okay, so come as you are, okay, you come as you are, but you don't feel the need to change. You don't feel the need to humble yourself. So that's what the world teaches you, okay? This is why it's so important, guys, to get into that Bible, to get into your word, study to show yourself approved so you can read it for yourself and you can know what God wants for your life because that's how God speaks to us. Okay, God speaks to us through his word. So if you're not reading the word of God, if you're not studying to show yourself approved, you're going to be deceived out here by liars and, you know, people who, who work for the devil. Okay, Satan's kingdom is running rampant and they want to take you out. Okay, so the spiritual warfare that's happening in our lifetime, uh, I just see it as a greater good. And I understand this too, that there's always a time for everything under the sun. You're not always going to be under a war. You're not always going to be attacked. Okay, there's also a time for peace. There's also a time for love. Okay, so, you know, embrace the season that you're in. And even if you are in a time period where it's hard, it's hectic, you don't know how you're going to do this and that, you want to 100% put your trust in God. 100%. I know it's kind of like, kind of like cliche, kind of like easy to say, you know, but to, for you to actually do that, uh, it's not as easy as it seems. You know, a lot of people are walking and living in fear. They're not walking and living in faith. Okay, um, and this is why it's so important to, be, to, read the, to read the Bible because it says that you got to walk by faith you know, and not by sight. So it's easy to quote Bible verses, right? It's easy just to read it, but to actually apply it in your life, that's where it gets hard. So I encourage you guys all to apply the word of God into your life. Um, listen, guys, if you are struggling with this and that, a stronghold or sin, uh, you got to pray it off. You got to really get into some fasting and prayer, cut off people that you know that's around you who is detrimental to your walk with Christ, people who are uh, looking at you weird and crazy all because you want to do the right thing, okay? You want to do the right thing, they want to do the wrong thing, okay? That's the world we're in right now, the state of the world, you know? So continue to do the right thing. Continue to do what's good. Uh, continue to do what's just. And, you know, like I said, God will reward you. And the people who are naysayers, the people who are uh, gossiping, slandering you, laughing at you, scoffing and mocking, because we're going to have many of those people. We're going to have many scoffers and mockers. Even people who call themselves Bible believers, okay? So always understand that with those people who do those things to you, God's going to make sure when he blesses you that they're going to see it. They're going to be forced to see it, guys. 100%. So I hope you guys got blessed with this message. Just a quick one. Um, I'm actually getting to office too, so I'm going to be making way more videos uh, next weekend. So I'm really excited for that. If you guys made it this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment, and share it below too. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.